All righty. So let me pull this up, what we're going to be talking about tonight. I would imagine we get a good number of people for this particular um, meeting tonight um, because it's it's a big it's a big vast subject and I'm only going to show you teach you one little medicine and I've taught it in my good gut bad gut course um, and in much greater detail but I'm going to give you one little remedy that sometimes just this medicine alone without getting too deep into food intolerances and good gut bad gut and my allergic course and all that business, maybe I can even spare people to just use just this. But if it doesn't act, it doesn't do enough good, then by all means, I do urge you to do that. So I'm in my Materia Medica, which is um, now in, in Espanol. And yep, I'll be clicking there in a minute. And as soon as I finish, <laughs> my husband is directing me. <laughs> And it's in Espanol and soon to be completed in German. Uh, we've got a publisher in Germany who's really interested in, in what we're doing. So it's kind of exciting because Germany is one of the biggest countries out there for um, homeopathy because, of course, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann hailed from Germany. Okay, so for, for those who suffer from dairy intolerances, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, I'm going to teach you my quick go-to medicine. For some people, it is a slam dunk. For others, it's um, mm, it doesn't do much good at all. So, but let's give it a try, okay? So I'm on page 81 of my Materia Medica, and it's a very short little section. Um, and I really didn't even talk about dairy intolerances in it, in, in using this medicine. And the medicine is LAC. And of course, we're using the words, in their, their Latin terms. So lac means milk, um, like um, lactate or lactating. Um, and and deflor, defloratum, defloratum um, is the second word. So the second word is D-E-F-L-O-R-A-T-U-M, lac defloratum, which is actually made from skim milk. Homeopathic medicine, diluted many times, made from skim milk. And so that makes it kind of interesting. And you would think, why skim milk? To be honest, I don't know the answer. I just know that this is a medicine that can help with other issues. And I'll read them to you now, and then we'll go to dairy intolerance and how I've used it for this. So I'm going to read directly from page 81, where it says this remedy is used for diseases caused by faulty nutrition. And we know that if someone cannot tolerate um, dairy, then there's faulty nutrition. There's usually gut dysbiosis. It usually stems from, um, it usually stems from uh, antibiotic use, eating the wrong foods, but mostly antibiotic use. That's where, where, where all of this is coming from, folks. And I'm sure most of you know this already, but for those of you who don't, um, even if someone says, yeah, but I haven't had antibiotics in 25 years, matters not. It can change the gut um, semi-permanently. And what I mean by that is, is it can change the gut until you correct it homeopathically. Now, can you correct it other ways? Why, certainly. Chiropractic is good. High-quality nutrition can be useful. There are other methods. But I believe so fully in homeopathy that I became a homeopath, not a nutritionist, even though I have a pension for it and a great deal of interest. I did not become a chiropractor, still believe in it, but I believe in homeopathy so wholeheartedly that I believe that it is the ultimate medicine. So, so for faulty nutrition, and now don't just use this just because you have faulty nutrition. Don't assume that that's good enough. I'm giving you a, a buildup of an information and giving you the keynotes those aspects of this medicine that are um, that we have to kind of look for before we make a decision on using it. All righty. So key symptoms can include sick headaches with intense throbbing, nausea, vomiting. Of course, there we go with the gut. Um, obstinate constipation and even blindness. Isn't that interesting? Often the pain begins in the forehead uh, upon rising in the morning and other symptoms include car sickness, again, nausea, or vomiting, profuse flow of urine, and great prostration. And great prostration often comes from gut dysbiosis, very common. So the person may feel despondent, and although he has no fear of death, 
he is sure he is going to die. Interesting, interesting little twist. And in homeopathy, when we can find something that is strange, rare, and peculiar, we want to jump on it. So what that means is that most people, if they're sure they're going to die, have anxiety about it. But the person who needs this particular medicine does not. Now, we're not talking about the elderly, someone who's, you know, 98 years old and they're ready to die. They've lived their lives and they have no fear of it. That's different. We're talking about someone who's not at the end of their lives, their life. So the symptoms become worse from noise, light, motion, and during menses and improve from pressure and from bandaging the head tightly. Now, all of that is kind of, most of that is kind of superfluous. It's not as important as the poor nutrition and the fact that this person has dairy intolerance. Um, whether it's skim milk dairy intolerance matters not, or it's whole milk, or it's raw milk, or it's fermented milk made into yogurt or um, or inoculated, uh, such as yogurt or kefir, um, or it's highly from highly um, aged, like in cheeses matters not. We're talking about intolerances to dairy. So it goes across the board, sour cream, cottage cheese matters not. If the person is having trouble with that um, and you have tried some of the medicines that I've discussed in my courses and there still is no change, you might want to add this, lac de florum. Two words, lac, L-A-C, de flora, de floratum, excuse me. D-E-F-L-O-R-A-T-U-M, lac de floratum. And I have used this medicine in a six. I've used it in a 30. I've used it in a 200. And it, I often start with six. So this is going to be interesting because I know people are going to be asking me about um, Athusa and Bovista and Calcarb and tuberculinum, and there are many other medicines that can also be, but that's the beauty of homeopathy is because we're not all exactly the same. And so when one medicine works for one group of people, another medicine may not work for that and another one would work. And sometimes we have to tease things apart so that we can really get to which is the, which are the symptoms that are the most noteworthy. So when I teach you this in this particular one, for example, this rem, I'm going to read it again. This remedy is used for disease caused by faulty nutrition and especially dairy intolerance. Key symptoms include sick headaches with intense throbbing, nausea, and vomiting. If you can find someone who has dairy intolerance, who has that sick feeling with a headache that is um, has nausea, vomiting, intense throbbing, now we might have the right picture, right on the mark. So uh, let's see if we've got some questions here. I don't have an awful lot to tell you about this medicine other than that. I would use it, in, I've used it in a 630, a 200. And when I have used it, I've used it twice daily. Now, how long do we use it? That's often the question. Well, generally for a chronic condition, we use this for mm, six weeks, eight weeks. And if the person is improving, but is not, it's not complete, then we continue six, eight weeks, um, 16 weeks, 24 weeks, et cetera. We keep going until we see complete resolution. If, however, the person um, um, is not improving at all, no shift after six to eight weeks, there's not even a modicum of a change, eh, get rid of it. If the person, here's another reason we would get rid of it. If the person is not only not improving, but they're actually worsening, again, get rid of it. Now, it doesn't mean, oh boy, now we're lost. We don't know what we're going to do. Then in that case, now we move to the next medicine because as many of you know, there are 6,000 homeopathic medicines out there. I teach, generally speaking, I teach only about 100 because to be honest, that's all you really need. But I'm being a little facetious and saying there are 6,000 of them out there. You certainly don't have to consider 599 uh, 5,999 more. Um, you really only have to look within that first hundred and stay within the Materia Medica and you should, you'll be able to find, most likely you'll be able to find the medicine that works. And as if it's a chronic condition, such as a dairy intolerance, by all means, I do want you to consider my course, Good Gut, Bad Gut. But try this first. Look, I, 
love uh, 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 people who buy my courses because it means that they're really committed and they're really involved and they learn very deeply. And I always tell them, don't just teach, excuse me, don't just study um, this, the, the courses that I teach one time. Take that course three, four times. I mean, you won't, you pay for it. You paid for it once. You don't have to pay for it time and again. Just use it over and over and over again. And you'd be surprised how often you'll find uh, what you're looking for that you missed the first time, the second, and perhaps even the third time. But my point is, if I can teach you this for free on Facebook Live um, with my mighties, um, they, it's not free for my mighties, but it's not very expensive. And so many people like that because I give a little different kind of information there. Um, and, um, and if I can teach it in my podcasts, in articles that I've had published, etc., then by all means, that is my goal. How would you know what potency to use? All right. So the way that I look at it is this. When I don't, when we don't have an exact protocol, then you have a choice, 6, 30, 200. Yeah, I mean, could you use it in a 12? Could you use it in one M, I suppose? I've never done it that way. Um, I would use a six if you're not so sure. Kind of creep up on it. Oh, just a little bit, twice a day, six X, six C. Well, actually, it would be a six C most likely is what you would find. Um, lac de floratum in six C, twice daily. And then you see how things go. And if after... You find that, um, you know, over uh, six weeks, there's improvement. Then some might say, well, then if there's improvement, let's go faster and go to a 30 or a 200. I say, mm, no, if there's improvement, even though it's too slow for your taste, nonetheless, don't tinker with success. Stay with what is acting. Stay with it and continue on. So here's what Joet has said, condensed. Okay, lactofloratum. Thank you. That's really good. Thank you for putting that together for me. And then 10.5, you, you reviewed Kelly Self. Right after is lactofloratum. Is there a reason you skipped to lactofloratum? Yes, I did. I did skip because lactofloratum is a very difficult medicine to purchase. That's why I skipped over it. And I don't want to drive people crazy. <laughs> So I try to stay with medicines that are more common and are easily purchased. Um, and lacaninum is a little less common, not as readily used, and is more difficult to find. So, all right. Just helped a friend's daughter overcome her dairy intolerance of 13 years. She's so happy. Excellent job, Donna. And tell us, tell us what you use. Donna's part of Mighty's. Now let's go back to Facebook. All righty. Let's see what we've got here. You look like you've lost weight. Hello from Louisiana. Electricity is off, but my cell phone is working, so I still get to watch you tonight. Thanks for saying I lost weight from many months ago, but now it's I'm stuck. Uh, that's wonderful. El S. Bueno. Hi from Dickinson. Hi, Rebecca. All righty, let's see what we've got. I thought Athusa would be what you were going to say for dairy intolerance. Thanks for sharing. Athusa, A-E-T-H-U-S-A, is a great medicine for, for dairy intolerance as well. And often it's my first choice, but sometimes, you know, it's worth just trying this. Nothing is absolute here. So, all righty. Do you usually start with Athusa for dairy intolerance? It really depends. Athusa is not just dairy intolerance. Athusa has other aspects to it as well. And I teach that in my Good Gut, Bad Gut course. And a lot of it has to do with what is the um, what the growth is like in children, especially. So if someone is childlike or the, their milestones are being missed, there is a dead ringer for Athusa. Um, inability to read by the time they're in fifth grade, that's more. And they have dairy intolerance, now it's a Thusa. Okay. All right. And let's see what we've got. Can one use NAET along with homeopathy for food intolerances? Here's the thing with using a, a, um, a method such as NAET or chiropractic or acupuncture or supplements. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And when in a pinch and you have no choice, 
then you might do it. Here's the problem with it. At the end of the six or eight weeks, let's say there's improvement. Which is the one that's improved it? Is it NAET? Is it um, lactiflorotum? Is it Athusa? Is it kelp carb? Is it tuberculin? What's acting? Now, in NAET, may, it may not matter what is working. But in homeopathy, it does matter. We are watching very closely to see what those symptoms are. And if, the, as I said earlier, if there's improvement, but you're not done, you stay with it. But what if the improvement is not from that medicine? And then you continue taking it and you end up proving it. Not a horrible thing, but it, for those, who, especially those who are not um, versed in homeopathy, it can be very confusing because... Look, folks, let me tell you this. The easiest part of homeopathy is to know which medicine to use. Because I tell you, it's that easy. It's this medicine, this potency, and this frequency. How long? It's this amount of time. It's after the six to eight weeks has passed. That's the hard part. That is case management. And that's what I teach in my courses. Now, sometimes you just luck out and it's gone and you don't have to worry about it. And you stop taking it and you're done. And that's what I hope for often. But when it becomes um a, a a matter of what is it that i'm seeing is there improvement how much is there improvement did you write down keep good notes did you note how bad that problem with that nausea was did you assign it a number did you determine how often it occurred or did you record that if you did not record that and you go back in six to eight weeks you're not going to remember unless you have a photographic memory what was how it was acting before this medicine was administered and so all of that has to be gone through and so if you've got more than one paradigm supplements and vitamins and essential oils and um naet and chiropractic now you don't know what you're doing and i would uh i would guarantee that na any naet practitioner chiropractor, acupuncturist would say the same thing. They don't want to see different paradigms used at once because they need to know. Okay. So would you use this within conjunction with Athusa? Not generally. That's not what I would like. Rather just choose one and go with it. Here is what Joan. Okay. Let's see what we've got with Mighties. I listen to your class podcast over and over and I always learn something new each time. Isn't it amazing? And it's because homeopathy is so um intense there's so much to learn there's so much information excuse me nat may be nutrition eliminating let's see okay maybe nutrition eliminating testing no uh naet is to correct nutrition problems and allergies etc okay before i met you my baby who was six now got two rounds of antibiotics and i truly believe that is why she propels herself around the house if she gets into dairy especially cottage cheese yes you bet yep um all righty so you add this to athusa if athusa alone isn't working no i would if you are a a seasoned homeopath then there's nothing wrong with adding but to be able to decipher which one is acting at the end of the six to eight weeks, then I would not do that. I would choose one and kind of try to stay with that. Go for the six to eight weeks. Watch to see if there's even a tiny bit of change. We don't expect Athusa to wipe out food intolerance or dairy intolerances in six to eight weeks. What we're looking for is this much change. That's all we need to see. Some modicum of a shift. All right. If a person doesn't fit this uh, lactifloratum remedy, would you repeat other remedies for dairy intolerance? Yes, I would. Um, I thought I read the symptoms may worsen before improving. No, 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 no. <laughs> Rachel, the reason I'm saying it like that is because I don't use classical homeopathy. And classical homeopathy is where people get worse before they get better. And that's one of the reasons, one, only one, and it's not even a big one, but it is one of the many reasons I no longer use classical homeopathy. And the reason it doesn't work that way in with the practical homeopathy that I use with these specific protocols um, is because they're repeated. Classical homeopaths are scared to death of repetition. And I was too when I was classical. I used classical homeopathy in my practice exclusively 
for 15 years. I was in full-time practice 15 years and I used it and I found it to be wanting to say the least, which is why I've abandoned it. Um, I still believe that there are some aspects of classical that can be valuable, but it's not actually the, the method. It's more how to use the repertory um, that is still valuable. So do not expect an aggravation. I have a concern that happened at our Thanksgiving gathering. One of my grandchildren came to my house with a tummy ache, and according to his parents, it was associated with his bowel movements, constipation. So what is your remedy for constipation? Well, we're not going to talk about specifically constipation, but if you go to my blog, you will find a lot of the questions that people ask are just right there on the blog. And this is what you do. You don't even have to go to the blog. It might be in, a, in an article that I've written for Wise Traditions or... Um, other uh, forums, you just Joe at Calabrese constipation, and there you will find what you're looking for with the name of the medicine, the frequent, the potency and the frequency. I love your courses and bought good gut, bad gut, but would love a workbook to refer to easily. Internet, not always accessible. Interesting. I, you know, let me give that some thought, Nora. We've got so many things underway right now. You know, we're putting together, we're still in the middle where I think I'd lesson four for our kids course in homeopathy. And we're starting our academy where I will be teaching how to repertorize and how to integrate uh, classical aspects and practical method. Um, okay, this is our second hurricane in 43 days and there is another one heading this way. Prayers appreciated. You bet, Juanita. Absolutely. Prayers to Juanita for hurricane safety. Mighty member, I've noticed major improvements in my family, two adult children with autism, myself with mold issues and chronic Lyme. It's never too late to start. Thank you for saying that, Carrie. That's really helpful to people because many people ask me the question, will I be helped even though this is an old condition? What if I took a lot of antibiotics? Can homeopathy still help me? Homeopathy is, is capable of uprooting, not necessarily quickly, but sometimes it is quick. Um, conditions that are a lifetime old. I work with people who are in their late 80s and in their 90s, and they've had this condition for many years, whatever this condition may be. Okay, let's see. Okay, another way. Okay, we're talking about what is it? Well, NAET, just look it up online. How do you feel if an infant may have dairy intolerance? How do you tell if an infant has dairy intolerance? Can waking, crying, uh, be in effect. It can be, but if the baby is not drinking milk, eating food that has dairy in it, then, and because the baby is nursed, now you have to look at what the mom is eating. And a good way to find out, I think even better than testing, I find tests, food intolerance tests, wanting. Allergy tests, archaic. The best test is mom, stop all dairy. Give it at least a month, six weeks, now watch the baby. Then have a dairy fest, then have yogurt for breakfast and cheese for lunch and more cheese and milk, etc., for a couple of days and now see what happens with the baby. And you will know. Um, okay, can you, gain, can you gain cover the, can you again probably cover the difference between Bovista and Lacta uh, de Floratum? Well, Bovista is broader. Bovista is a very broad medicine and it's for food intolerances in general, where this is specific for dairy. Um, and there you go. Somebody just said um, NAET is allergy elimination techniques. You bet. Okay. Now let's see what we've got from my mighties. Um, I agree with Nora. I don't always want to like to turn the computer on to look at my info on good gut, bad gut. For children, Nux Vamica, there you go. 200 until it improves. Joe, it has it on a blog. Two, I, Nux Vomica 200 or Nux Vomica 30 is sometimes even better. Um, I have a concern that happened at our Thanksgiving gathering. Okay, got that already. Um, all right. So I want to make sure I've got taken care of my mighties. Hoping you might answer the question about celiac and lactose intolerance that was asked above. Well, I don't want to get too much into that because I could go on and on about it. That's a whole. That's why I put a whole course together for it. But do indeed look at my blog. I do discuss it. Um, all right. You ever use a support, the use of muscle testing to determine the remedy, which would be most effective for a person, maybe to narrow it down. I've never used muscle testing. No, my wife and I love your hair. <laughs> Thank you, Norm. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> agreed. Would love a workbook. All right. Let me just see. What is recommended if I if I'm required to take a flu vaccine for my job? Ah, sorry to hear that, boy. Um, I actually am talking about um, vaccinosis and what to you in my mighty group. I'm going to be talking about it in greater detail coming up soon. Um, so I have talked about it. Just Google my name. You might find some information, but it's been a long time since I put anything up about that. Uh, okay. Let's just see. All right. I gave my son a dose of Kelly by chromium 30 for a very specific type of headache because it was the only remedy listed in Kent's Materia Medica for it basically loss of vision. Then the vision comes back and pain and the, and the head pain occurs. But when I gave it to him, it made it much worse. I'm a mighty. <laughs> okay, Elaine, that means if it made it much worse, it's the wrong medicine. I mean, it's so that was so specific. You would think that that would help. But I would assume that it's the wrong medicine. Now, if when you say that it was worse, it was just a little bit worse, you might give it another couple tries. But if it's much worse, then don't put the person, don't put your son through that. All righty, let's see what else we've got here. Um, mighties, mighties, mighties. I listen to your clad. Okay, learn something new every time. Great. I'm so happy to hear that. I have a concern that that happened at our thanks got that already. I'm going over them by accident. I agree with Nora. Does muscle testing help some clients with picking or stick? Some people count on muscle testing. Can't wait for the academy. I know me, me neither, Kathy. I'm so looking forward to this. Um, and okay. That thanks, Elaine. That's exactly what we used. And in 24 hours, there was great improvement. Elaine, I think, was talking about Nux Vomica 200 twice daily for constipation. Now, I've used constipation in a 200, and I've, excuse me, I've used Nux Vomica in a 200, and I've also used it in a 30. Both are very good for constipation. All right. I think we have got, let's see if we've got any more here. Elaine says, yes, Thuya 30. It's not the only one. We've got other medicines in addition to Thuya, but absolutely Thuya. You will find that in all the old homeopathy books we're talking about for, um, for vaccinosis and to protect against, uh, against vaccines that are required. But let me also mention that um, I know that some employers require it, but get a hold of your doctor and see if you can get a medical exemption for something legitimate. Find something legitimate and then see what you can do. I think it is gross overreach, this, this stuff with these with medical concerns. You wouldn't take a Thusa and Lactifloratum for dairy intolerances, but it is it okay to take Bovista and Lactifloratum? Um, here's the thing. It's, it's, we don't want to use a medicine for this condition and then another medicine for this condition and then another medicine for this condition and this kind of fits this and we're st and it's um, different aspects of the same condition is what I mean. So if we've got weed intolerance and we've got dairy intolerance and we've got nausea, I don't want to, I don't want to see those all uh, piled up. We need to be, what's the word? More tidy. We want to edit and make sure these medicines are working tightly. It's like an artist. When the artist is looking at a painting and saying, let's see, should I put a little more white in there or should it be? Oh, I think I better stop because if I stop now, it's edited properly. Then you step back and look at it. And it's the same thing as a wordsmith. Someone who writes on a regular basis, they don't use every adjective. They're using one powerful adjective. So it doesn't mean you can't use a medicine for arthritis as well as a medicine for food intolerances. I'm, that's not what I'm saying, but we don't want to stack up all the food intolerance medicines. I would use one medicine, allow it to act, even if it's just a tiny bit, then keep watching, watching, continually use it, use it, use it, use it, watch for a little more um, improvement. And the only way you're going to know if there's true improvement is if you've done your layout properly from the first at the opening of the case so that you know exactly what um, that person was suffering and to what degree. That's how you're going to know. And so 
Um, all right, Thuya has, I'm going to answer or mention one more here. Thuya has really been helping our dog. It's been a long haul, though it is an old injury, but I see so much improvement. Thank you so much. Very helpful. You're very welcome. God bless all of you. Now, how do I get off of this? This is the most, <laughs> here we go. I see the button now. God bless all of you. If you're not a mighty, consider it. If you don't want to become a mighty, no problem. Stay on Facebook and just stay at my and on my blog and you'll get plenty of information. So God bless all of you. Bye now.